Are you ready to take your business to the next level and make the money you want so that you can create the impact you desire? Then you're in the right place. It's possible to run a successful business built around your life. Get ready for a little bit of tough love and a whole lot of strategy to grow your business without sacrificing your sanity. If you're ready to get out of your own way and step into the role of CEO, then let's go. I'm Amy Tra, and this is the Motivated CEO Podcast. Welcome back into the Motivated CEO Podcast. Today, we are talking with Kelly Lynn Adams, and we're going to be just talking about all things business, business growth, business strategy. Kelly and I have connected a few times now, and she is just such a wealth of information. So before we dive in to today's episode, I would love to welcome her in and have her share more about herself. So Kelly, welcome to the podcast. Thanks, Amy. I'm so excited to be here. I'm so excited for our conversation today. So tell our listeners all about yourself, who you are, what you do, and who you serve. Yeah. So in a nutshell, so I started on Wall Street and then I climbed the corporate ladder for 20 plus years. I was doing finance, strategy, and HR for some of the biggest world uh, luxury fashion retail brands. And I was building seven, eight, nine figure businesses. Uh, I was also leading teams. And so that's now what I do for female entrepreneurs. So I love it. And But in the meantime, when I was still in corporate and then building this business, I started coaching in 2009. So I'm an OG in the coaching world. Uh, but what happened is I burnt out in the hospital and landed in the hospital, burnt out. And I was doing that because I was literally working all the time. I was not having fun. And I just wanted the success. I wanted the recognition. I wanted all of that because I equated that with feeling loved. And the harder I worked, the more recognition and love I would get. So my subconscious and made a, a very deep connection there. And then I just was like, you know what? I don't want to work so hard that I was losing myself. So I had a, a lot of trauma. And that's when I started to deep and go deeper into the work. And, uh, and then fast forward a couple of years ago, I went full time in my own business and love who I'm serving, female entrepreneurs. Uh, I do serve other people in my one-on-one -on -one practice, but I love the female entrepreneurs that are like growing and scaling their business. Oh, there's so much beauty in the journey of entrepreneurship, isn't it? It's just crazy to look back and reflect of those past versions of ourselves. And something you are such a genius at is helping women shatter that glass ceiling that invisible glass ceiling that a lot of times is self-imposed and that's one of those things that i think from the inside looking out we don't always see it we feel like okay like you said if i just work smarter if i just work harder if i just do more if i hustle 24 7 that's going to get me from point a to point b faster but the reality is that's a fast track to burnout because you've been there I think yeah. we all have as entrepreneurs at some point on our journey, we hit that rock bottom that we realize, oh, wait, this this isn't as easy as I thought it was going to be. So this is where you really come in. You help women break through and get out of their own way. So what is step one to doing that? Yeah, it's the beliefs that we hold because we all have these beliefs, uh, zero to seven, we were programmed. And it's the beliefs that sometimes we're not even aware of, right? We're seeing things in a different lens or perspective. Cause I like to tell people we're all walking around life with these pair of glasses on and we see outside of these lenses and we all see different perspectives on how we were, you know, and this all is how we were raised, how we were brought up, what we were, what environments we were subjected to. So all of that, so it's the belief and it's it's the identity work and people, because you can have all the strategies, all the strategies work, the sales strategies, the uh, getting into action strategies, the marketing and messaging, the calling in and attracting clients. However, you could be doing all the work and some of my clients are like, I'm doing all the things, I'm taking all the actions every day, but it's like, okay, well, where are you believing? Like, what yeah. is underneath that, that yeah, you're maybe taking all the actions, but are you maybe you know, believing a certain limiting belief that you cannot call or attract in clients by you, because you can have all the frameworks. So that's step one, because what I find is when you really get down to it, when I'm coaching people, it's like, sometimes there's these limiting beliefs and subconscious 
reprogramming that gets to happen and we're not really even aware of it. Yeah. And it's hard. It's hard because it is subconscious, like you said. And until you're aware of that, that can hold you back. And I love how you said too, all of the strategies out there work. I agree 100%. I would even say this back when I was working as, you know, in my career as a physical therapist, like all of the strategy out there works, but if you don't have that core belief, you're going to be rolling a boulder up a mountain. It's going to feel heavy. It's going to feel hard. You're going to have so much resistance that the only thing that's going to happen is burnout. Mm -hmm. And that's an unfortunate reality that so many of us face. And I, I don't think that a lot of entrepreneurs are ready for the personal development journey that entrepreneurship brings. Yeah, and you really have to like brainwash yourself. You yeah. literally like read like either you're cons like, what are you consuming? And these are like some tangible tips. It's like, yeah. what are you consuming every day? And it's, what are you listening to? What are you watching to? What environments and what rooms are you getting into? Uh, do you have a coach or coaches? Do you have mentors? You literally have to become someone else. And Dr. Joe Dispenza always talks about this, right? Stepping into that new identity and being okay with allowing the grief and the old identity to leave. Um, because that's what where I see people kind of get tripped up. It's like, okay, well, I'm doing all the things, but it's like, are you literally rewiring and brainwashing yourself to your future version of yourself? Yeah, yeah I love Joe Dispenza. It's, it's incredible when you take that step back. And you realize, yeah, I do have to shift into this new identity and letting go of some of those old parts of us that no longer serve us. It's scary because mm -hmm. it's unfamiliar. It's a new reality and anything new to us, our brain's going to try and keep us safe. Yeah. But once you have the awareness that, okay, this doesn't feel good right now, but this is part of the process. Mm -hmm. It's all about mindset. It's all about shifting those beliefs and it's hard. It's not an easy thing, especially when those around you don't support you. When you were on your entrepreneurial journey early on, did you come across any of that resistance from others? Like, what are you doing? Why would you leave this highly successful career oh, to yeah. do your own thing? And if yeah. so, how did oh. you work through it? Tons, tons, tons. And even myself, I'm like, oh, I'm going to give up the clothing allowance and all the perks and the travel. I'm like, oh my God. Um, so yeah, like free clothes are good, you know, high end yeah. luxury free clothes and handbags and all. So yes, even within myself. And so, and this is where like the second step in peace and how I, so I did that. I really like, even my commutes and, uh, to and from work, every nugget of the day I was listening or consuming something that was elevating me, uh, always working with coaches and mentors. But the second piece of it is like the self-leadership piece of it is how was I leading myself? So when I say self-leadership, it's like, okay, what are you doing behind the scenes when no one is watching? When it doesn't matter if you don't reach out or make the post. Well, sometimes the post matters, right? People will see it, but it doesn't matter. The things that behind the scenes that people can't see, how much water are you drinking? Are you actually moving your body every day? Like, what are you doing? So that for me, like has been, and still today is a muscle that gets to be flexed over and over and over. So that was a second piece because it was like, oh, I thought when I was going to leave my job, I was like, oh, I can wake up at 10 a.m. and noon and start my day. This is freedom. This is entrepreneurship. And this is I, some of this, like people are sold, you know, oh yeah, let's just work. And listen, I know people that work four hour weeks and that's great. But uh, for me, it's, I, I have different mission and, and vision for myself. So I, I won't be working the two hour days. Uh, even though that's great, I, to me, it's like, I'd be bored. Um, but it's, it's and my life and my work and my play, like all are, are one. So, but the, the way I lead myself and, and that is so important. And so I think for people listening, it's such a practice because there's always, there's nuances. There's always a little bit that you can refine or from all different aspects of life. So how are you were showing up your feelings, even, you know, like, how are you feeling on a daily basis or an hourly basis? So I think the self leadership component, and that can hit in all different topics is huge for people and doing like a self audit. Like I did an audit of my time of where the heck I was spending my time. Cause like, I used to always say, I don't have enough time. It's like, is that true? Let me look at your calendar, Kelly. And let's see like where, where your time is actually being right. Dedicated.
Yeah. We forget that we have that choice over our time. And a time audit is one of my favorite, like secret weapon tools, because even for myself, I have to do one on a regular basis because you're right. We get busy doing all of the things, but are they the right things? Are we spending our time consuming because we think that we're doing market research? We think that we're doing something, but no, we're we're not actually implementing that amazing knowledge that we have, because as you said earlier, every single strategy works. Pick one and implement, take action, make that forward progress. And the idea of self-leadership, so, so crucial to business success, because at the end of the day, it's you versus you, and you can be the one to be in your own way. Like you said, it's discipline. It's a muscle. It requires you showing up, doing the actions, taking those actions day in and day out, especially when nobody else sees what you're doing. Nobody else is rewarding you. Nobody's there at the end of the day to give you a performance review other than your bank account. You know, that right there is a direct reflection of, okay, are these actions actually propelling you in the direction that you desire to be in? So this self this concept of self leadership is not a, a it's a non negotiable in a business like you need to have that personal accountability to yourself, you need to show up for yourself, you need to take responsibility for your actions, because at the end of the day it's you versus you. yeah so beautiful and it is it really everyone's like oh no it's me against the competition i'm like you are the competition yeah (laughs) right exactly like when you look back in the at yourself in the mirror yep that's your competition right there and i i love your your perspective on that because yeah it's us versus us competition's just proof of market demand that's showing you yep if someone else is out there making money doing what you're doing so can you there are how many billions or trillions i don't even know what it is in this world Yeah, there are people out there that need you. You just have to get out of your own way and identify these self limiting beliefs and have that belief in yourself. And it's interesting that you say, you know, belief is step one. That's actually my word of the year is believe this year. I don't know if you did a word of the year, but you know, it's, it goes back to that theory of, okay, who do I need to be in order to have the results I desire? Like it all stems back from belief. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And I want like the people listening to if they're in like a not so great place, because we all go there, right? Oh, yeah. Life lives. And some days we're like, oh, I just don't feel it. Or maybe something is actually going on personally, or maybe you're not hitting the targets and you're doing all the work. I also want you to to think like there's nothing wrong with you. Yeah. You know, there's nothing, you know, death and grief are going to happen. I had one recently in my life. You know, things aren't going to work in business. Like not every day, like every day is the best day of our lives because we're up and we're breathing. However, when life lives, there's certain times we're not feeling like, oh, like what am I doing wrong? Why is it not working? You know, why is it not on my timeline? Usually on God's. So it's, it's giving ourselves permission and grace. Like that is nothing is wrong with you. And that's also, um, I heard this phrase, I forget where I heard it, but you're actually being planted in order to like rise, right. Or to like, you know, bloom. So even if you're in the season of life, and this is what I have always uh, seem to be true. Like whenever I'm feeling in that stuck or stagnation place, I actually move. I go outside literally, or I take a walk, or I actually like make a phone call, or I do an email. I just get into action because for me, I have learned it just shifts the energy, shifts the state, shifts the story. And there's always like, oh, I get to like, I'm feeling like I'm moving forward. So that has always been very helpful for me. And I just want to, I needed to say that because I'm like, you know, everyone kind of, you know, social media and all the filters and all the things going on and and we can get caught up in like, oh my gosh, everything, you know, million dollar minutes are made now. or Like everyone's doing so much better than me. And I've been in the game so long and like, why isn't it happening according to my timeline? So I just wanted to put that out there in case anyone's like, okay. Yeah, let, let's get to the, the, the deep stuff, you know? Yes, and that's the reality of it. There's nothing wrong with you. Building a business is a long game. Like you said, you're an OG. You've been doing this since 2009. It's very, very rare 
that someone wakes up with a brand new business concept as an, and is an overnight millionaire. They already have built an audience somewhere. They already have built something somewhere. And we don't always see that full picture and it can make it very easy to compare ourselves with others. But I love your advice. Like, hey, first of all, first of all, there's nothing wrong with you. Second of all, get into action. Get into action because I am a firm believer in action that creates momentum and momentum creates results. Move. And it doesn't matter how fast or slow you're going. Every single step counts. And sometimes, like you said, the best step you can do is just get outside and move. Take a walk, clear your head, go back and listen to yourself. You know, there's a reason we get all these awesome thoughts in the shower. And it's oftentimes the only time during the day that we're alone with our thoughts because we're always consuming. It's a noisy, noisy world. It is, especially on social media, especially. Yeah. So like limit your time on that. And, 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 and again, it's, you're looking every, everyone's highlight reel. So that's where, you know, even for the generations coming up, right. That's all they know. So it's like, oh my gosh, yeah. like, how are we going to manage that and, and set expectations and, and not have right this good enough and worthy conversation come up because that is a real, it's a real thing. Yeah. So over the years, you know, like we've said, you've been in this industry forever. How have you gotten through those points where you're like, you know what, it would just be easier to go back to a nine to five because we all have them. What gets you through those quit points? Uh, <laughs> listen, there's been so many times I've been on my knees. Uh, there's so many different things. So uh, God and, and spirituality for me, uh, family and friends, you know, having a support system yeah. and having mentors and coaches like that has been non-negotiable and like a game changer for me. And then just putting myself in rooms like where people are just further along. And so it's like, okay, I see the possibility, but also not allowing it for me to like take it out, be taken out, yeah. right? Like it can be a trigger, but it's also a trigger or like inspiration for me to be like, oh, that's what's possible or what can I do differently? And just looking at, so all of those have helped. And I think the movement, like just when I didn't know what else to do, like when I was literally on my knees, like crying on the bathroom floor or in the hospital, it's like, okay, well, you can't really move in the hospital, but like thinking what action or different thought can I, can I take? Because when it comes down to it, we always have choice and we always have the power, right? We, we can create and cultivate power at any time. So if you, for example, got a phone call that, you know, one of your loved ones is in the hospital, it's like, okay, I have the power. What state do I want to be in? What what do I consciously want to be the next move I want to make? Or it could be like you get really incredible news, right? So it's managing those states, um, but also not getting like emotionally flooded too, because that used to happen to me too. And even sometimes I'm like, oh, Kelly, I'm going down the rabbit hole, right? So it's like, okay, like where am I? Again, back to the self leadership. I'll have the pity party, but then I'll limit the downtime. Right. So it's like, okay, I'll feel like crap or maybe I'll allow myself 12 hours or four hours or 30 minutes or whatever. But then it's like, then Kelly, you get to move on and, and take action. Yeah. That's so important. Just, you know, being aware of it, accepting it for what it is, acknowledging it. I think it's, you know, very contradictory when we just try and ignore it, pretend like it's not there. It's like, at the end of the day, we're human. We're human and we're allowed to experience emotions. We need to experience and process these emotions. We need to give ourselves time to move through the stages. And a lot of times we forget that we have that control. No matter how crazy the circumstances, no matter how crazy the situation, we can control our thoughts. We can shift our perspective. And that right there gives you power back in any situation that you can use the worst situation and transform your thoughts to, okay, we can use this as a growth opportunity. What can I learn? What is this world trying to teach me from this? Because yes, this experience, it, it stinks, mm -hmm. but life happens. Like you said, life will life. And that is the reality. You cannot change it. Mm -hmm. When you realize that you can control those thoughts, mm -hmm. you can control those beliefs and shift them and believe that you are that woman that you desire to become, that's when you start to shatter your own glass ceiling, right? Yeah. And I say it becomes delusional if it's right. so right? It's exactly. like, oh, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Like, <laughs> right, right. 
We're so good as kids at being delusional and dreaming so big. And then as adults, we're just like, mm, I mean, maybe one day, but then we don't get out there because we hold ourselves back because we yeah. write other people's stories for them. Mm -hmm. And it's yeah, sad. Sure. So true. Yeah. It's, and it takes, it takes courage, right? Cause like you said in the beginning, it's, it's like change, right? Our brain wants to stay the same, but it's like, if you're not growing, you're dying. I mean, we're all dying, but, but it's like, it's, it, we want to stay safe, right? It's, it's, it's the known, but it's like, no, all growth happens in the uncomfortable and the unknown. And that's why I also challenge my clients. And I don't know if there's like the three-step process, but it's like getting uncomfortable every day, right? Like yeah. how can you be, and sometimes just being with your thoughts is very uncomfortable, right? <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Seriously. Seriously. Right. But just physically like getting uncomfortable, like it, it, can you pitch yourself? Can you actually do a cold outreach like that's not comfortable is it asking for the sale some people that's like not comfortable at all i love it it's like let's do it but it's it's like where is your edge where can you bump up right everyone's doing the cold plunges and and all but it's like where is your edge maybe it's like you know what i'm going to start to run like so it's doing something every day uncomfortable no matter what it is to just flex that muscle yeah. And like you said, it's, it's flexing the muscle. It's putting in the reps and that scary thing gets to be normal. It gets to be fun. It gets to be exciting and not so scary anymore. You harness all of that energy for so much good. Kelly, oh, you gave us so many mic drop moments today. How can we get into your world, learn all about you, everything you're doing? Yeah, everyone just head on, my, on to my website at kellylynnadams.com. Perfect. Well, thank you, Kelly, so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to share with us today. Thank you, Amy, for having me. And until next time, cheers to making the money you want so you can create the impact you desire. Are you loving what you're hearing? Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss an episode. 